Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our communion time. And um, communion is a holy time when we want God to come down among us and uh, sanctify us. Because it's holy moment, we need to compare, confess all our sins to make our heart holy. Let's have a minute of silence. Confess your sin before the Lord. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come to your holy throne, recognizing you are the creator and the judge. You are our Father, and you are also the, our King. You have standards, and it is holy. It demands perfection. We certainly fell short of that standard, but you have given us a replacement through Jesus Christ, your only Son, who is our Lord through our faith. We pray that you give us the trust in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. And because of what he did, we have been totally freed from the consequence of sin. And we pray that now we shall be willing to live a life in the holiness of, for your honor. And may you be with us this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the uh, Gospel of Luke, it um, told us a lot about the um, coming of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, um, he uh, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, right? He didn't have a human father. And he was born of the Virgin Mary. From her, he gained his humanity. And uh, when he grew up, he was a normal child, except that he never sinned. Okay? Uh, he did not do any miracles, and there was a so-called Gospel of Thomas, and it says when Jesus, as a boy, played with the neighborhood kids, and uh, the neighborhood kid did something that vexed him, and he said, zap you, and psh, that boy was gone. Is that the true Gospel? No, it's not a true gospel. It shows a, 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 um, a deity of sort with great power, yet no restraint, right? And arbitrariness. And that is not the character of our true God. God is full of mercy. He's slow to anger, right? He is love. So Jesus Christ definitely would not have been that kind of boy, okay, when, in his childhood. And uh, when he was about... 12 years old, he went to uh, the temple with his parents to worship. And at that time, he started to ask questions and debate theological problems with the teachers of the law. And that's just amazing how a 12-year-old could do that. Of course, if you are a God-man who has no... Um, no sin and no damage to your gene whatsoever. Whatever you hear, you remember, and whatever you, you learned, you systemize and you never confuse. He would be a superior student, wouldn't he? It would be hard to be his brother, right, to compare with him. <laughs> and uh, at, at that time, he was uh, lost for a few days. His parents left, and when they came back, he um, was found, and his mother was very... Uh, anxious and actually said, why do you do this way? Your father and I have been anxious, lo anxiously looking for you. She meant your father as Joseph, okay, the adoptive father. And, and he said to them, why is that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? So who does he mean as his father? God, the heavenly father, all right. And, but they did not understand the statement which he had made to them, and he uh, went down with them and came to Nazareth, which means the city of the branch. Nazar is the branch. The branch of Jesse will be the savior. Okay? And uh, he uh, continued in subjection to them, and his mother treasured these things in her heart. So was Jesus an obedient child? He was perfectly obedient. 
Okay? That accident was in not his fault. His parents' fault lost him, right? But he was obedient and submissive all the way as he should as a child. Okay? And, uh, and at the end of this passage it said, And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. In wisdom, that's his thought. In stature, that's his body. And his favor with God is a vertical dimension relationship, and with man is his horizontal dis relationship. Jesus Christ was a perfect man. He never sinned in any of those dimensions in spiritual or physical way. That's w that is why he should not have died. There's no wage for his sin. He has no sin, right? <laughs> And uh, there, uh, the wage of sin should not have applied to him. Yet he gave up his life because he loved us. And that's why we are here remembering his work and uh, remember that all we have that's important for our eternal life is given by him. It's undeserved by us, but it's a free gift from God through Jesus Christ. Because of his free gift, we have everything. Without him, we are nothing. With him, we have everything. Thus, we owe our life to him. We need to live our life for him. So open our ears. Listen to his commands and obey, and you will feel the goodness uh, in the will of God. Many men come here, distribute these elements. Let's pray. God, our Father, Thank you for giving us your only son, our Lord. And uh, he came from heaven to earth, and he lived as a perfect man from birth till um, his um, death and resurrection and uh, ascension. So his death was not necessary, but he gave his life of his own free will because of his love for us. Without him, we would be deserving the hell's hellish fire. But with him, we are now uh, received as your children and uh, as your sons, as the, your heir and the citizen of your kingdom. All of these glories came of free grace. We pray that grace will melt us and change us and uh, reform us, transform us to make us into Christ's image. May that come soon, gradually and completely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ gave us this Christian right to let us have something on which we can think about him and remember him. This bread is unleavened bread, and since leaven is a symbol of sin, unleavened bread is a symbol of the sinless life of Christ. And uh, in the uh, Israelite uh, rite of um, uh, Passover, they don't have this meaning of sinlessness. They just understand that as uh, remembering the hastiness of Israel leaving Egypt because they had no time of rising the bread. They brought no um, east. And uh, they ate this hard bread for a month until they ran it out. And what did God do after hearing the, them complain? Rather than punishing them, as he did later, but God says, no, don't worry. I will give you a heavenly bread, which is manna. But by the way, it starts from tomorrow, but you can collect it every day of the week except the seventh day on which there will be none. You can try, but there it will be none. But the sixth day, you will have double portion. On the other days, it's regular portion, and you can't keep it overnight. It will rot. But on the sixth day, you can keep it overnight. It will not rot. Okay? It's a supernatural bread from heaven. You eat it, you keep your bodily um, uh, health, and uh, you can be alive physically. But Jesus Christ later claimed that he is the bread of heaven. And if you eat his body, flesh, and drink his blood, you will keep your spiritual life. Okay? 
And uh, of course, this is symbolically speaking, eating his body means you let his life enter your life and replace your life daily as you keep on learning his word and changing your life according to what you understand. So today, as we eat this unleavened bread, remember that Jesus Christ gave his life unnecessarily for him, but necessarily for us. It is voluntary. It's because of his love. And it's a free gift. When we eat of it, we want him to not only enter our life as he has done already when we believed in his name, but we want him to transform our life daily in which we have committed to read his words and understand it and practice whatever we understand. And by the obedience, we will know the goodness of the will of the Father. Body of Jesus given for us, we take it in remembrance of Him. There's another part of cer ceremony when Jesus lifted up the cup and said, This is the blood of the new covenant which I will shed for you. Drink it as often as you want. In remembrance of me. When we do this, we remember that he, his blood covers us, thus we are secure in salvation, but we, have, we are living in the expectation of his second coming. At that time, he will celebrate his success in maintaining us. But how much glory we shall receive, how much reward we shall receive, depend on our level of obedience and cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Letting him Fill us and control us and transform us and let us really obey to the uttermost to get all of the potential rewards he, pre uh, he has prepared for us and it's for that day we live. The blood of Jesus shed for us, we take it in remembrance of him. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for coming 2,000 years ago physically, to redeem our sins. And thank you for being present with us now, spiritually, to feed our lives. May you draw up from the well and feed your thirsty lamb and let our soul be filled with your Holy Spirit, with your truth and your love. And uh, may we be transformed and be faithful so that we can overcome sins by the power of your Holy Spirit and uh, will live our life for your pleasure. May that day come when you call us faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. pray. Amen. Thank you.